The day that I've been waiting for has finally arrived. The DJI Osmo has shown up at my door. If you're not familiar with it, I'll put a link down in the video description to where you can find out some more info on this, but basically, DJI is a company, they make a lot of different drones and quadcopters, but they also make some excellent gimbal stabilized cameras, usually found on those quadcopters. But in this case, they've taken their Zenmuse X3 camera, made some minor improvements to it, added a microphone through this handle, and of course, stuck it on a handle with a battery. So it is now a stabilized handheld camera. So let's open it up, find out what's in the box, get it set up and do some initial testing. Well, inside the box, it looked like there were four smaller items right here at the top. This I would assume is the documentation, if there is any. There you have a quick start guide, safety and disclaimer information, and then what appears to be some 3M stickers. I'm sure we'll find out more about that here in just a minute. In this box, I would assume is the battery and the charger. Yep, this says DJI and it's a charger. And here is the battery for the Osmo. This is a 980 milliamp hour, 10.8 watt hour, 11.1 volt battery in this box. There's a strap, just in case you don't want to drop it. I think this is the little tiny piece that actually fits. It's like a grommet, fits into a hole on the side. A strap, which I would assume goes with the case. And then the charger cable. And finally, the most important thing in the entire thing. Very, very nice case, by the way. DJI branded, has the Osmo on there. Let's go ahead and open this up. Let's see if we can break it. That's a really nice case, I'm a big fan. Has a little silica gel, we can get rid of that and it has a little strap in here to hold it in place. So this is the camera. Has a little bit of foam packed in here on the side to hold it in place. Take that out. We may actually hold on to that. This would be the area where you're gonna mount your phone. Kind of swivel this around depending on what your phone size is and stretch it out. So this will take a pretty decent sized phone. Or like I said, you can take this thing off if you want to and put this little clip in just to hold it there. But here on the front, you can see you've got a power LED there, got a little joystick here that you can move this around with, power button here on the side. Of course, we don't have a battery in it at the moment, so there's not gonna be any power happening. On this side, you have the button. Push that button a certain number of times, it'll flip it in certain directions. Lens cap on, peel that off, and right there's your lens. You can see on the front, it does say 20 millimeter equivalent, F2.8, 94 degree field of view, 3.6 millimeters. And actually just for safety, I'm gonna go ahead and put that back on. And that does fold out to be pretty compact, not too bad at all. Then this whole thing can kind of twist. You see that twist, and then the whole unit just kind of lifts out. So this is replaceable. There's your micro USB. And on the side, I can actually see it does have a micro SD card in it already. And in this case, it did come with a 16 gigabyte Lexar micro SD card, UHS-1, 633 times speed. And actually, because this is sort of a technical thing, I'm gonna take just a minute, and I'm gonna start reading through some of the manual, see if I can get this up and going without breaking it all. Alrighty, so after reading through the little quick start manual that comes with it, I did find out a few things. One, you're gonna have to have the DJI Go app. This is available in the Google Play Store. They do have a barcode you can scan inside of here to actually go download it directly. It just gives you an APK file, but getting it from the Play Store means you'll get the updates immediately, which I would prefer. It tells you to prepare the battery. I'm doing that right this very second. It says to mount your mobile device. I'm not gonna do that quite yet, but again, to do that, fold this little thing out to however big you need it to be to fit your device and slide it out to make it fit. Then you're going to unlock the gimbal. In order to unlock the gimbal, you have to one, twist the, the main camera unit, two, twist this, this little section of the gimbal, twist it toward the unlock area, and then there's a lever on the side, twist that, and now it's all free floating for the most part. Then once you've done that, you basically turn it on, you pair your phone up to the Wi-Fi hotspot, and you're ready to go. Now I have looked up what the controls all actually do. This is the joystick that you can manually maneuver it around with. Here's the shutter button so you can take photos with it, the record button to of course record, the trigger to lock which area it's pointing at, you hold it down to lock it, you double tap it to center it, you triple tap it to put it in selfie mode, which will of course turn it back toward you, which is probably what I'll end up doing a lot of the time. And other than that, it's basically just, let's go ahead and wait until the battery is charged. So I'll be right back in just a second. All right, battery is charged. Time to stick it in here and see what happens. Pull this down. Maybe heard that little beep but we are flashing green now, so it should be starting up. We've got the DJI Go app here. Now actually, before you open this app, you're supposed to go ahead and get connected to the Wi-Fi hotspot that this creates, so we'll make sure I've got that done first. There you go. In my case, it says Osmo 17B4E9, and it does say right here the default password 12341234. Nice and secure. All right, we should be connecting now. It says connected, no internet. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's, it's actually making a whirring sound. Well, it's like the camera is blowing out air. It's actually kind of loud. 
But let's get the app running. And it says I should be able to just enter the camera view through the app. Well, not sure what was going on there. I was trying to use the Nexus 5X. For some reason, it just decided not to work. So I've gone back to the Yoda phone. But as you can see, when I connect to the Wi-Fi, now it says activate Osmo. So we're gonna hit continue. It says confirm your activated account. And I have to sign in with my DJI account. Now the weird thing is because it does require internet connectivity to sign in, you're gonna have to kind of go back and forth. Now it wants to make sure the device is connected. It does say activation successful. Definitely had to go, oh, probably better pick that up. It's starting to actually use stuff. At this point, I can just sort of slide the phone in over here. Hope that it doesn't, yeah, the power button's right there. So this may not be the best phone for this. All right, I've got the OnePlus 2 in place now. Hopefully this will actually work properly and allow me to control it because I don't have the power button there. You know, I will say my biggest concern with all this so far is just how loud and how warm this is. All right, not sure what happened there. For some reason, having it in here, it was screwing it up. Uh, it says, before using Osmo, there's a few things you should know. Sure, we're gonna do the tutorial. Hold Osmo upright to continue. I'm just gonna set it on my table. I'll hit continue. Now it says, let's get started. Rotate your wrist to point it left and right or up and down. So we're gonna do left. Well done, it's translating your movements into smooth moves. Okay, slide the joystick. Left and right or up and down. Great, the joystick is working. Press and hold the trigger while rotating the handle. Well done, pressing the trigger. You may be able to see that, it's holding it in place. Try double tapping the trigger. And it centers it. Recentering the camera is just that easy. That should be a little easier to see. How about a selfie? Triple tap the trigger. Aha. And there's us. All right, now you know most of the tricks. We can't see, wait to see what you create. All right, the turn around. Let's see if I can put this in here and actually use it. We are connected, We're going up and down. We're going left and right. And I'm still more than a little bit concerned about the, the heat generated as well as the amount of sound. But I think at this point, it's time to start doing a few tests with this thing. All right, and we should be recording at this point. Not really sure how this is gonna turn out, but uh... I am pointing at myself. I'm able to move it around by using the stick. This is a really interesting interface. Um, seems to be working though. So I'm recording and I'm able to, well, if I move it around, you can obviously tell that it's moving a little bit, but it is stabilized. So it should be nice and decently stable. And actually, I should be able to get up and walk around with it. There we go. Yeah, uh, moving this around is going to take some getting used to. It's uh, it shows that it's recording. That's what the little, there's a flashy red light on it. But I've been going for about 50 seconds. I'm, I'm curious to see how this turns out and how this looks. It is very easy to keep yourself in the frame, although it's a little bit heavy with the OnePlus 2 on here. Alrighty, so this is a quick test using the DJI Osmo. I'm hand holding it, obviously, uh, but I'm filming at 1080p, 60 frames per second. I did a quick test with this earlier. The audio is pretty much non existent, and if I do anything like click on the stick, it, you can hear it when I click on it. If I use the joystick, I think you can kind of hear it. You can just barely hear anything. So a powered microphone is going to be a must with this. But like I said, I am using 1080p at 60. I'll be doing another test of this at 4K resolution, 4K at 30 frames per second. I'm doing 1080p 60 right now because it will integrate well with the rest of the footage that I've got so far. And actually, I wanted to do a bit of a quick test using a wired microphone. I've got the Rode video mic overhead. It's actually plugged in. Uh, it's plugged into the back of the, well, the front, I guess, of the DJI Osmo. It is powered on, so hopefully you'll be able to hear what I'm saying a little bit better now, maybe a little bit clearer. And actually, as a bit of a test, I'm now using the Rode pen mic here. You can see it is attached, and if I tap on it, it should make noise. So uh, I was just curious if this was gonna work because it is a phantom powered mic and it does appear to be working. I did a very quick test just a second ago. I'm not actually using the phone anymore. I'm just using the camera because I have a pretty good impression of where it's actually pointing at this point. So I shouldn't really need it. So yeah, you'll have to let me know what this footage looks like as well. It seems to be kind of moving as I'm talking. It's just like I'm not touching it and it's kind of shifting away from me. So I don't know what's going on. So for my initial impressions of the device, because I want to go ahead and just give a little bit of info about it, and I will be doing more coverage on this as time progresses. I will say I'm very, very impressed with the build quality. It's solid as a rock. Once I got it up and working with my phone, and that took quite a while to happen, 
it seems to be working pretty solidly. The OnePlus 2 has been a bit stuttery with uh, actually capturing the video, but the videos captured are captured on the camera itself, so it's just actually showing the live video stream that can be a little bit stuttery. The other sort of issue, and I've got my little infrared laser thing here, we'll go ahead and give just the baseline. The desk itself, the table itself, is about 76. The handle is about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The camera itself right now is about 100 and if you hit just the right spot, 103, 104. When I was using it for a few minutes earlier, I saw it go up as high as 110 in places. So this thing does get decently hot. Not sure on all the conversions there, sorry. But 105 degrees Fahrenheit, that's definitely decently hot. It's not anything that's going to damage it, but it does let you know that this little section up here is going to be warmed at the touch. More than a little bit warm. But all the video samples that I did with this were, were all done at 1080p at 60 frames per second. I'm also going to be including a separate video at 4K at 30 frames per second just because can't really put both in the same video. And I do want to make sure to do 4K at 30 frames per second. So there will be a second clip coming up from this. So let me know what else you'd like to see me do with this. I'll definitely be taking it with me to DroidCon here in a couple of days. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for continued support. And we will see you again in the very next video. Oh.